when we are live. Oh, live. live. Yes. <laughs> live and loud. All right, you're listening to Revolution Rampage. I'm Omar. I'm Zach. I'm Amanda. And today with us, we have the esteemed towering at a six foot. Uh, six foot ten. <laughs> okay, five foot four from the NWHL, Colleen Murphy. Hey guys, happy to be here. Yay! We actually have a real hockey player. <laughs> For once, you're our first real hockey player on this I mean, podcast. I mean, we have other hockey players, but she's like, I said real. Way, way. Yeah. Are you there. sure you can call me real? I don't know. It's debatable sometimes. I don't know. No, no, no. Not you to are, us. You're not to us. real. You are real. He is way up there. We're, we've had. Uh, we're so lucky. P- we have had a play. We've had a PA announcer in Wade. We've had Zach, who's a play-by-play for NC State. Yeah. We've yeah. had uh, a Michelle. semi-wreck hockey mm-hmm. player uh, nc trailblazers yeah right shot them out <laughs> mm-hmm. absolutely so uh, and we got more people coming it's gonna be this place is getting a lot more interesting with guests yeah i think yeah i think we've got a little bit of a, a not a niche but uh, we have our, our own taste of hockey podcasting so welcome colleen to resolution rampage yeah seriously thank you for having me welcome to the randomness <laughs> yes so today on this episode we're going to talk to Colleen about the NWHL, but before that, we're going to cover uh, what happened with the Marksmen. We're going to cover the Thunderbirds, the Checkers, and of course, our team with two wins in the lead in the second round, <laughs> the Carolina Hurricanes. Yeah, they've won five, they've won six games since the last time we recorded, which was after game two's overtime loss to Washington. Yeah, and no, we'll, we'll get into all that here yeah. and some more. Right after this. Awesome. So where do you want to start? Uh, well, first, let's recognize our live studio audience. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. So we actually have... <laughs> Kilted Kaniac over here, who Grab is the, now our Grab social the, uh, media guy. So let me see. Yeah, Jeff. Yeah, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Hey, hey Jeff. Jeff. If you can't recognize him, that's Kilt. That's because he doesn't. No, he's a real person. Uh, <laughs> he's a real person. So yeah, and we got some other people just a out here. So all right, so let's start off going all the way back to round one. We left off at game two. We came back home to Raleigh. Game three, five nothing. Game four, two to one. That place was. Was yeah, let's start with the five nothing. That set a tone. That set a tone that this team was not a pushover team. This team can come in <laughs> and play with the best. It can rock the best, and they did. They they rocked yeah. the Washington Capitals. They should. That was fantastic. I mean, the first game there was no way Washington was going to win. After the first period, that thing was a rout. Yeah, you're talking about game four. That one was a little bit of uh, an interesting back and forth. However, again, uh, they actually they, they man- maintained because it, it was tied 1-1 before the turbo goal. And then once turbo took off, and really they just shut down the door. Uh, Mrazic has been great in this series. I know he just stepped out from uh, playing today, letting Kurtz McElhinney get his first uh, ice time. But we'll get into that a little bit later. Um Funny, we're talking about this, and the highlights are playing on the screen right yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. um, but l- let's talk about the emergence of the second dynamic rookie after what happened with Smetchikov getting a uh, concussion protocol from Ovechkin, Warren Fogel. McLevin? Fog Daddy on Twitter. Oh, my goodness, this guy is taking off. What is he now, five goals yeah, in the playoffs? After today, after today mm-hmm. it's five goals because he gave us the lead uh, with his fifth. No, he tied it with the fifth. Yeah. It, it was Nino with the tip yeah. on the You're second. right. Yeah, you cr- I stand corrected. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not yeah. very often it happens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, you got to admit, we as Kaniacs showed up for 3, 4, and 6. We showed up, I believe it was game 4, we set a record for hockey in that building. 19,450-something, yeah. if my math is and one correct. Picked. I didn't count everyone, but, you know. I'm gonna take their word for it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got, how do you judge it? I mean, you, know. you got to admit that crowd was amazing. It was amazing. Hamilton's now a social media star. 
That's so funny. We're not talking about Dougie. <laughs> We're talking funny. about Hamilton the pig. Absolutely. And you see that after the game, uh, the players, they went into the locker room screaming, where's Hamilton? I think that was after game six. <laughs> Did they really? Yeah, yeah they I went in that. screaming, where's Hamilton? And, and think, I think it was a man who said, I don't think they're talking about Dougie. <laughs> no. He was at the watch party for game one. Was he there today? I don't, I don't think I'm so. Sure. Uh, he might have so. been uh, either that or I mean, it's a pig. Yeah. You know, he he spends long hours. He'll be he'll be back for game three. He lives literally oh, yeah. right down the street from PNC. I know I know yeah. the guy who owns him. Yeah. And I mean, you got to admit, it's so anybody here would not want to hug that pig. Mm-mm. Yeah, you I'm would. Not, not, I'm Jeff, not big, big why not? Big. Why not, Jeff? Yeah. <laughs> they, they we, would. We've got to give you Jeff would a hug mic. him. He's like he's like itching over here. We got to give Jeff a uh, mic. I get, but <laughs> I mean, the fact that the Canes, the Caniacs, are just going absolutely insane all all three home games. Then you go into Game Seven, down to nothing. They're like, oh no, here we go again. Right? We thought, okay, we honestly watching Game Seven. I went into it emotionally prepared for that to be the end. Uh, I went in there going, thinking to myself, okay, what, what, what are the positive takeaways? I want, I, I started adding every single positive takeaway. You know, we took the Stanley Cup champs to game seven. Oh, look, we, we scored a couple times. Mm-hmm. We didn't just take the loss laying down. Oh, we're tied. Um, hey, we took him to overtime. We took him to double overtime. Oh, we took everything. <laughs> <laughs> Colleen, where How were you it? during all this? Where, you at, where were you watching? I've been watching from home. If that's going to work, it's going to work. Plus, I'd rather not hear everyone hear my explicits every time. Uh, uh, so. Trust, trust me. Con on camera. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Reputation to get up. Um, I, for Game 7, was at the Ale House, and then literally right before the Canes' first goal, who showed up but Amanda? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amanda her. literally showed up, and about three minutes later, we scored. Yep. I'm a lucky charm. <laughs> hey, you know, you, I, can, I, can, I can tell you one better. I went to, you don't hate me for this, I went and saw Avengers during during uh, game one uh, two days ago. And no spoilers. Uh, I, I left the movie video. theater looking for a score, didn't find any. It was 0-0 zero, zero go, yeah. going mm-hmm. to overtime that as was... I left the theater. Oh and so gosh. I was like, all right, I'm going to the restaurant. So I went to the restaurant, mm-hmm. and as I sat down, I, I think we ordered some nachos or something. And as I sat down, I look up, and well, look at that. We won. <laughs> hey, there you go. You better shut your mouth with all with the spo- if you spoil something, I will deck you. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, with the Aquaman Avengers. Aquaman dies mm-hmm. at the end. <laughs> <laughs> That's the wrong universe. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> but th- amazingly, the Kaniacs are just showing up. You see Kane stuff everywhere now. It used to be a niche thing, especially in this area with all the basketball and college baseball going on right now. Things are ex Exploding, mm-hmm. and Kane fans are coming out of the woodwork. And um, yes, they're complaining about the ticket prices, but <laughs> things keep going. Yeah. I mean, what is next? What is next? They come back for three and four. How is PNC going to step their game up? Oh, what man. is going to happen? They are going to be on fire mm-hmm. Wednesday. I mean, you're talking about they already released the designs for the f- towels. Yeah, yeah they did. I mean, you're talking about they were on fire. When the team was down yeah. two games yeah. going into a game three, yeah. imagine having to leave. Oh oh, imagine, yeah. I mean, let's imagine they insane. even took they take game three. Imagine game oh, four yeah. on mm-hmm. a Friday. That game was sold out maybe twenty minutes after they yep. released tickets. Yeah. Um. Now it's going to be especially in the whole NHL playoffs. It's the battle of the chaos squad. All four wild cards love made it, it. and it. now yes. it's. Who in the wild card spots are going to one up each other? Mm-hmm. It for the Eastern Conference, it's Carolina versus Columbus with the crowd. Who's going to have a better crowd for both games? And well, you see what the, what Columbus calls their crowd, the fifth line. <laughs> yeah. And I like it. That's I really cute. like yeah. that concept of uh, the fifth cute. line. That's like you know, instead of your twelfth man, your yeah. um, you know your fifth line. We need to find something for the PNC crowd. We got I the Caniacs. We got the Caniacs. We got the loud. I mean, we got the loudest <laughs> house in the NHL back. I, yeah, I don't know the what end. Islanders are going to do because that that their mm. crowd was pretty quiet today. It's, oh, yeah. And it's not really their fault. I mean, if we played in Nassau, that ice yeah. looked terrible. That would have been a oh, different yeah. story altogether. I mean, Barclays is a. It's not an NHL arena whatsoever. It's a basketball mm-hmm. arena. B the the uh, the thing that has the best seats in the house is a freaking SUV. C <laughs> yeah. the Brooklyn Nets aren't <laughs> even that good. That. 
brutal. Yeah, the Brooklyn. I don't know what is that. Cricket? They're, they're out of What's the. Pl- they're out of the. Cricket? They're out of the cricket, cricket playoffs. <laughs> they are out of the cricket playoffs. So, well, if, if you if you don't know, that's one of his catchphrases. Right, he calls yeah, anything yeah. not hockey cricket. I like that. Yeah. The other one. I have. We don't know. What that I have calling. Don't, of approval. don't worry. <laughs> yes. Don't worry. He has another one. He has another one that he will eventually. I'll give him spit one. Out I don't one. know about two though. <laughs> words are hard. Words. Yes. Yeah. Words are hard. Words are hard. I think that's the uh, podcast. Sorry, motto. my wife co- constantly corrects me in pronunciation of things. <laughs> Thank you, Kristen. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> She's not paying attention. It's all right. We're boring as it is. <laughs> All right, so we got game three on Friday at PNC Arena. You know what's Wednesday. weird? No, Wednesday. 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 Sorry, game four's on Friday. Mm-hmm. Yes. Do you know what's weird about Wednesday? What's and this weird? is more of a personal story for me. Um, Wednesday is the teacher protest in Raleigh, mm-hmm. and they're all wearing red. Ah, it's a <laughs> well, sign. Well, you know, yeah. It's a sign. There it's a go. sign. We're going to win. We, we, we should take <laughs> pictures of them. Be like, look, the Kaniacs came out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We should just take all the teachers oh, maybe, maybe that not, go out. Though. We don't want to take away no, from we don't want to take sure. away from that their message. And their, we should take all the teachers that are we there and just give them a ticket. Teachers. Absolutely. Just t- take all the teachers and just throw them in the arena and be like, there. They're already It's like the Islanders have your funding. Go. Go after them. But, uh, what did he say? <laughs> this is going to be an amazing series. I know. Just give him a mic. <laughs> School's important, folks. I just want to remind you that, but hockey is more important. <laughs> er. <laughs> important. <laughs> er. The protest, is, the, pro- you, <laughs> the protest is in the morning, the game's in the afternoon. You can do both. Yeah. And then you got this weekend, which is the Kentucky Derby and a bunch of other things. What is that, cricket? More cricket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of these days, I'm actually going to bring up like an actual <laughs> like cricket a event. Cricket and I'm going to switch it and be like, <laughs> what is that, baseball? What it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Weirdness. So we, we've gone through the Canes and their massive weirdness being a bunch of jerks. And Don Ch- oh, before we go, Don Chaney, you can now shut up. You got Ooh, Don, Don Cherry. Don Cherry. Oh, Lord, help us. <laughs> I watched that movie earlier today. That's my fault. All right, uh, Don Cherry, you can be quiet. Your boy <laughs> McElhaney got in goal and got a win, so be quiet. Yeah. Good old Canadian boy. <laughs> I don't know how he talks. I don't All know. right, so let's go on to well, the world of hockey in uh, North Carolina. So let's, before we move on to the checkers, let's, let's, I want to talk about the injuries in Carolina because oh, that yeah. affects the checkers, yeah, right? Yeah. All right, so, so as of right now, there are six All right, injuries so on the Carolina let's go. Let's go one by one. So, Andre Spetsnikov, he's been out since Game 3 after the he'll fight. Be ready for game, uh, he'll be ready for Game 3 against the Islanders. Hopefully. Uh, the I only thing so. holding him back is a practice. So, the Carolina Hurricanes have not been able to get a practice in since, really, a couple of days before Game well, 6. Well, tomorrow they should take the day off. Tomorrow and then they, they practice. Yeah, they they'll practice, practice on yeah. Tuesday. All right. After that, we got Martinuk, who played in Game 7, hurt probably. Took Game 1 and 2 off, but he actually skated in pregame. He did, and I think he's going to be more than ready uh, for Game 3. I think mm-hmm. Rod Bindemore is doing the right thing. Um, he's not forcing players to play, yeah. and he's letting the depth next man mm-hmm. up step up. Speaking of next man up, that includes Checkers players. So you we have Clark uh, Bishop. Clark Bishop. You got yeah. uh, Patrick Brown, the mm-hmm. Checkers yeah. captain, who has, has looked very good. And then um, now that... Well, depending on Saku Manalinen, he came out in the third period this one. game. So, will we have to bring somebody up, or will the Gays West see, be okay? I can see um, Sorella coming back up. All right. Um, he's been out for a while. I think it was, what, game five he went out. It's Michael like Furland. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think he went out in game Furland three. Was game game three, too. It was something game like three. It was early, and yeah. then— Game three. He, yeah, he Jeff, our stats three. guy, said game three. <laughs> yeah. So game three, he went out before the Ov uh, and Sveshnikov fight. Mm. All right. And then a few. I think it was yesterday. Some Canes fans were on Twitter going like, "Where is Michael Furlan? What? Where is he? What is he doing?" And he actually responded saying, yeah. "Maybe I'm rehabbing in Raleigh." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think he's. I think he's going to be uh, out for a while. But if we keep going in in this series and the next, he'll, we'll see him again. And, you know, we've talked about this before on the podcast is one of the things that I really like about this team is they really focus on the player's health. They're not trying Mm -hmm. to push them back out there. And, you know, they make sure that they are up to 
you know, up to the entire organization whatever. is looking mm-hmm. after the players. Sure. Well, right. the, the and that's two... the most important thing. Of course, we want to see these guys back on the ice, but we want them to be 100 percent first. True. Well, here's a question yeah. for Colleen mm-hmm. as a hockey player yourself is what do you <laughs> feel about this? Oh, I love it. I mean, Brendan Moore is a, you know, player's coach, right? Don Waddell, he gets it. They all get that we got to save these guys because and the thing is, is like you guys said, next man up. We have that depth and we have that trust in our players to take the spot that they're given and um, provide when needed to. And then once a player gets back in the lineup, it's a team thing, right? It's team first. Nobody cares, oh, I'm being sent back down or I'm getting called back up. It doesn't matter who it is. They're all playing for each other. And that's that organizational depth that the Canes have. Not only are the Canes good, the Checkers are good, the Everblades Mm -hmm. are good. And no matter what team they're on, they always seem to be playing for each other, for the fans, yeah. they're not worried they're, about they're going up and down. The coach, and, yeah, they, and they started down in the checkers because these checkers players they would play hard for uh, Coach Volucci, mm-hmm. and now it's it's translating well when they come up to play sure. for Rod Brindamore. Maybe a lot more so than they ever was for Bill Peters, mm-hmm. because Bill Peters wasn't just like, oh, I need better players, need better players. Rod Brindamore, he, when you see him watch our practice, he makes them do practice hard and, mm-hmm. and you know you have seen him say i'm doing this for you i'm doing this so that you can get into the hall of fame speaking of bill peters he has gone bye bye calgary's gone <laughs> calgary's gone i mean <laughs> thank you colorado mm-hmm. i mean chaos wild card squad wild card squad i mean every division leader is gone when the last time that happened was never it's never happened before so uh, it's, it's a um but going back to the key injuries, like we mm-hmm. gotta finish that list. We have yeah. to finish that list. All right, finish it up, finish First it up. of all, TVR. Mm-hmm. He lasted maybe two minutes, and then Clutterbuck TVR's came in and ruined his shoulder. Yeah, that TVR's did not gonna be good. out for a while. It's his not. wrist and and, yeah. and his. Uh, it could j- collarbone maybe. Collarbone. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a bit of both things. Mm-hmm. His wrist probably uh, it's just a sprain or something simple. I don't the know. Kind of floppy when he was coming. Well, out. here's the thing: if the if the if his shoulder just popped out, and I've had it pop out on me. If they place it back in, it's going to hurt for a few days, but then you're good to go. The oh, the bigger qu- problem he is rehab on that, though. You, you will he will rehab, but he will play if he can. Sure. The bigger problem is if when the when it popped out, the ligaments inside the shoulder, if those get mm-hmm. stretched, that's a huge itch that's issue. That's surgery. That's mm-hmm. surgery. So that's the bigger issue and that's where we're going to wait and see. Yeah, but for right now, there's enough depth down, especially defensive depth. Mm-hmm. You got uh, well, Flurry is probably going to draw in, and yeah. then you also got probably Jake Bean getting called up. Well, we still have Hayden Flurry. I thought Flurry did really well in the couple games he played. I don't yeah, know he was a healthy scratch. Really to, he was, he was a healthy scratch today, and when Calvin DeHaan was out for the first few yeah, games, exactly. he did a great job. He did. I'm still waiting for that first goal. It, it, watch it! Watch that first goal being like the Stanley Cup winner. Like, oh <laughs> my God, <laughs> Hayden Flurry! If that board. happened. Hayden, if that happens, we're going to just show up to the Stanley Cup event and just be like, we told you so. <laughs> All right, and then this mind. this injury, if it actually plays into anything terrible, it might mess up the Charlotte Checkers. And that is Peter Morazic going out in the second period. Mm. It looked like he had some sort of strain or cramp in his leg, and that's why he went. He was not happy getting pulled. Like, he no. did not mm-hmm. want to leave. So if but it did the lead to anything, fact that he, the fact that he was not happy leaving, and the fact that he wasn't just like, oh, you know, like I probably do have to go. He was like, no, no let me finish. And coach is like, no, get off. Um, probably states that this is not a super serious injury, and I think we might see him back. If not, I'm completely comfortable with Ned being up oh, here yeah. for a game. I mean, that was definitely yeah. one Especially of the since things. We're coming like, home. Mm-hmm. I was, well, that's in what I was no saying. way nervous about having McElhaney Mm-mm. step up. Absolutely not. The lone wolf comes yeah. in and does yeah. the job. I, mean, come on. I actually Shuts put this out. I actually put yeah. this on our Twitter. Um I put it as a reply for the Carolina Hurricanes account. I actually put that the lone wolf winning right before the Battle of Winterfell in Game of Thrones. <laughs> I think that's a good sign. Maybe Jon Snow will survive. Okay, guys. I think you just spoiled half a Game of Thrones for people. I know, Thank you. right? Jeez. Uh, <laughs> nah. Nah, 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 nah. Thank you. you know, HBO, if you, if HBO you haven't caught up by this on point. Us. HBO it was going to sue us, and I, don't, I can't afford that lawsuit. If you haven't caught up in Game of Thrones with the massive amount of hype, you have either not watched anything or you don't like it. 
I mean, maybe someone's <laughs> saving it. Maybe some people who like to wait until the show's over and then sit down in one night and binge watch. Uh, that is impossible. It right. would take a I whole week. it took week. us about a week, yeah, to binge the last few seasons you know, so to catch up. Uh, some people don't need sleep, you know? <laughs> Revolution Rampage, where we go from hockey to pop culture in about three seconds. <laughs> Flat. Put that on the stat. <laughs> We are the fastest podcast to just randomly change topics. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of changing topics, let's go over the checkers first round. All right, we go to the world of hockey in North Carolina. And let's start off in Charlotte with the yeah. Charlotte checkers as they win their first round three games to one over the Providence Bruins. Yeah, so nice. the Bruins are out in the minor league, and that sends um, Lee Stepniak. Out of the playoffs. Yes. Way oh, to go. Is that where he is now? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> didn't know that. I like Stimniak. So that leaves Joakim Nordstrom as the Deep only up. remaining former Kane from last season. I know mm-hmm. before some people were like, what about Riley Nash? Um, nah. Before people jumped down my throat about that. <laughs> from last season, that is still in the playoffs. That means everyone else that we've lost is gone. Is gone. Well, there's a neat thing that Charlotte does that Look. I really wish the Hurricanes did. Is they have on their boards, on their ice boards, they actually have a win count that they spray paint X's on every time they win. That is really cool. Hmm. I really wish the Canes did that or somebody. I don't know. I feel like there's a bit of a jinxing um, kind of concept, a little overconfidence. That's your opinion. I like it. I like it. You, you know, have I, your I mean, opinion. We, I mean, you're talking about a team that runs on the fact that there's some place where they're not supposed to be. True, <laughs> but here, but again, them. but again, checkers on the round two. Instead of a best of five this time, it's going to be a true best of seven, and they're going against, ironically, the AHL team of the Washington Capitals, the Hershey Bears. Yeah, well, they get DSP back because you know he's no longer in the NHL playoffs. Whoopsies. <laughs> Ooh, whoopsies. He was the Stanley. He was a Stanley Cup hero last year and the enemy of pretty much every Vegas fan. And now he's playing with Char- with the Hershey Bears. Hold on one second. Hey, Jeff. <laughs> How do you feel about DSP? Hey, Please tell Jeff. us. Are you talking? No cussing. <laughs> <laughs> so you're talking about uh, Pelly Smith, right? Oh, yeah. Or Smith Pelly or whatever. Smith Pelly. Yeah, that guy. Um I say he should put be put on Atkins because he's a bit out of weight, a bit, <laughs> bit out of shape. Dang. And uh, you know what? His hockey career might be uh, slowly uh, building up in uh, not a good way. And there you have it, folks, from the Kill the Candy Egg himself. <laughs> well, th- this is coming from a huge Canes fan who just so happens to also be a Vegas fan. <laughs> I really wish we had the, able to call like just some random Vegas fan and ask him that question. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! I, Vegas just not does not like Smith Pelly, and depending on how the series goes, a lot of Hurricanes slash Checkers fans are not going to like him either. Yeah, I wonder how many other. Um, well, here's the, on the, the, the thing the that the, the Checkers need to worry now. about mm. is when they go to Hershey, just don't eat chocolate. Stay away from the chocolate. Why? Hershey, Pencil- Hershey, Pennsylvania. They make right. all the Hershey products yeah, there, yeah. and the arena is literally right across the street from the mm-hmm. factory. I actually yeah, went up there the other day. Within a four-mile radius, you have the factory, the arena, and Hershey chocolate. Park. There's nothing wrong with eating chocolate. Okay? The, I mean, canes the Canes have been crushing ice, ice cream. cream. Right? <laughs> yeah, hey, that is because Sveshnikov is the server. Okay. <laughs> Wait, when he comes you back... Put, you put Nakus to serve ice cream out to everyone. Uh, I was about to say, when when Svech comes back, who becomes the server? Whoever's the healthy scratcher that day? <laughs> yeah, I guess. So there's that. All, All right. right, moving on. Moving Man, on. That, that is rookie we bullying right there. so much. <laughs> we di- we're digressing too much. Come on. Our, we're losing Okay, people. next up, we're going to Fayetteville, where unfortunately the Marksmen lost in their challenge round, the first round of the playoffs, two games to one. To the Birmingham Bulls. Right, I think we covered this last time that they won the first game uh, pretty handily, four nothing, and then they lost the next two in a row, including a four nothing shutout the very next game. So they got theirs back and then added one more. Yeah, I mean it's a unfortunate situation for all the fans down there, but the marksmen are making the best out of it. They're actually hosting watch parties for the hurricanes. And I mean, that's a great thing to go say, okay, our season's over. Let's 
bring in more hockey fans. That's absolutely right. So on Wednesday, if you do not have a ticket to PNC Arena, get yourself a ticket to the Crown Coliseum and come watch the Carolina Hurricanes take on the Islanders on their big screens. Have a nice seat. I think uh, it's going to be $1 drinks and $1 slices of pizza. Nice. What is it, five bucks to get in? Five bucks to get in, yes. That's cheap. That's not bad at all. Uh, Their their new uh, jumbo (laughs) screen is actually very nice. (laughs) $1. (laughs) One dollar (laughs) drinks. Jeff was very excited about this. Jeff, we know you want some beer right now, but you'll have to wait. <laughs> we'll get you one after. <laughs> All, right. All right. So, um, unfortunately, that ha- that had to happen. We're big fans of that organization. So, we'll see how they rebound next year. We'll see who comes back. Will the head coach come back? How the organization the co- handles everything. So, our next episode, we will have the Marksman head coach on there, uh, on with us, and we'll talk more Marksman hockey. I think I'm going to get an opportunity to do some play-by-play for them as well. Ooh, so that's going to be cool. fun and exciting uh, next year. Well, maybe not the play-by-play, but at least some analysis. Be, uh, yeah. I'm just going to show up behind them. John Forsland. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to show oh, up and be go. right behind them the whole time going, I'm watching you. Yeah, and right. I'm just going to be like, please stop. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Security. Where are we? Come on. All Let's right. The, la- the last <laughs> We got plenty of time. She's like, I want to get to the Colleen and Hurry. And people are like fast forwarding through this episode too. Like, let's get to the Colleen and Hurry. Right. <laughs> All right, the last team. Give and me my fangirl moment. Probably Shut the up. biggest <laughs> hockey news other than the Hurricanes so far is the Carolina Thunderbirds. The Thunderbirds. Are the Federal Hockey League champions. Yes, yeah, so we already have one championship in North Carolina with an opportunity to get two more I want that to just settle down for a second. Just State of champions of hockey. Yeah. So again, in North Carolina might lift three cups. Well, technically, mm. the Checkers already have three trophies. What? Well, we're talking about, about cups, though. We're talking here. about something you can drink yeah. water out of. Come so. on. Yeah. Um, so just to recap the series, it was three games to one against the El- Elmir- Elmira, Elmira Enforcers, Enforcers mm-hmm. who very controversially not too long ago – their owner may have punched a ref, may have. Something mm. like that. So that was an interesting concept because I think he got into an altercation with an official. The owner of the team got into an altercation with an official during game. So what the officials did was they left. Yeah. The but game was they never left. they left. The, the game never finished. They just they came, all said they eventually sayonara, came they eventually left. came back later, like a week later. To finish the game. <laughs> but yeah, they're like, you know what, I'm taking the ball, or in this case the puck and I'm going home. <laughs> Nobody's playing. I think the ref made contact first. We'll see. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it, the final game was an overtime goal. It was 38 seconds in. They have video of it on Instagram if you want want to see it. Congratulations to the Carolina Thunderbirds for not only winning their FHL championship or by far being the best team in that league. They won the regular season handily, and then they won the postgame handily. I think they should be allowed to enter the ECHL uh, or SBHL playoffs because I think the F- – I think it's ECHL, and then underneath that's SBHL, and underneath that is the uh, yeah. FHL. So yeah, and then whatever the ran- right there. then whatever yeah. random league you have thrown out yeah. there. Well, I will like I would like to give a shout out to the Elmira Enforcers. I mean, it's their first year back in the league as well, and they had uh, a lot going against them. But um, definitely a shout out to them because they, you know, took one game from the Thunderbirds. Oh yeah, as well, so. they won yeah. seven yeah. to two yeah. in game three. That's not mm-hmm. anything to go against. No, With a lot not. of us suspensions as well. <laughs> they should have. In reality, well, the team I watched is called the Enforcers, yeah. so mm-hmm. you know, and, I expect nothing less. In reality, oh, yeah. I watched game four, and a lot of that it should have been Elmira's game, but over time, you never know what happens. Yeah. So that's right, Kenny X. For those of you guys who live near uh, is it Greensboro, right? Winston the, Salem. Winston Salem. Um, you guys have an excellent hockey team out there. Enjoy it. Go watch the games. I'm sorry, next season, I guess, since this one's Do they get a parade? Over. I want to see a parade. <laughs> I, they should. I mean, there's no reason why they shouldn't get a parade. Or at least, here. or at least, Wake Forest say something because their arena is literally right across the street from Wake Forest football stadium. There you go. Yeah, I, yeah. I said Winston Salem. <laughs> yeah, but um, you brought he brought up an inter- interesting point with the Greensboro thing. Can we get a hockey team in Greensboro again? Nah, bring it. Here. I, I mean, what what level? 
An yeah. East, in maybe an ECHL team? Maybe. maybe. The, uh, Women's. We, we can be... No, a women's team? Women's well, we, there's options for that one. We'll get into that Less next. of travel for <laughs> Colleen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Might as well move Raleigh then. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right, all right. So we we gone through North Carolina. we gone through the Canes up to today. Let's get to the fun. Hi, Colleen. Hey. <laughs> all right. So yes, brief potatoes. overview. Brief overview of Colleen. She's from Cary, North Carolina. She went to Northeastern University. She is a defenseman. No, defense women. <laughs> defenseman. She's a defense she woman. Defense. <laughs> She's a defender. I, I like her. I play. I play D too. I, I'm, we're he we're on the pain. same page. We got the same the page. We go through. <laughs> um, she started her NWHL career with the Buffalo Buttes, and then this year she was with the Connecticut Sorry. Whalers, and the whale, yeah. whale singular the whale. whale. Whales. <laughs> Oh. How many times are going to do that? <laughs> well, just the one. We're going to have to teach you everything all over again. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. <laughs> you can't be he, right about everything. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's in Hartford, and anything in North Carolina that plays anything in Hartford or anything involved in Hartford, we're going to make fun of. Mm. I mean, North Carolina SC, the USL hockey the USL is that? the Cricket? USL championship ho- soccer team that we have here just played Hartford FC and whooped their butts 4 to 1 so I'm going to make fun of them <laughs> okay. shout outs to them Deadwell Society keep, keep your soccer out of my hockey right. <laughs> um but w- first of all let's go with the early so what did you do before college did you just go through rec leagues or was there an actual pro- semi professional league that you played in um, no professional league back then, but I played with the boys down here in Raleigh, um, and then I went away to prep school for call it for high school and in Vermont. Then from there, that's when I made over made way over to Boston. Hmm. So, how many other NWHL players are from North Carolina? Well, we got um, Alyssa Gallardi. Um, she's with the Boston Pride, and then so it's just us two right now. But previously, there was. Um, a couple other ones as well. So probably at one point there's four of us. So here's originally m- from from North Carolina. Awesome. So here's my question for you: With the amount of women's hockey growing mm-hmm. in North Carolina, and I know you're part of uh, that growth here, um, do you see that number growing, like possibly exponentially? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, not only just from with the support of the Canes, um, the community in general, we have, you know the girls program is growing and not only just the girls as well, but you can see the women's programs go growing yeah. too. You know, you have a rec team league, which is the trailblazers. You have two women's travel teams as well. Um, the, you know, both right now with the lady hurricanes, which is a B team. And then we have a C team, um, you know, the Carolina Aceage. So there's multiple levels for women to play as well and travel and go to nationals, which is pretty cool. They did a pretty good job, the Lady Hurricanes this year. I think. Yeah. Th- what did they place this year? We were we came third. Third. Yeah. Hey, you got a medal. You got a medal. Yeah. That's that's yeah. impressive, especially yeah. in the mm-hmm. hockey market where people bash us for just being hockey fans. Sure. Yeah. And so it's it's huge. Didn't you Sorry, just man. go to California? Yeah. So nationals yes. were in were in Anaheim, California. Nice. So it was, nice. you got to travel cool places as well. So. Sounds like D two all over again. <laughs> yeah. That's that's the Mighty Ducks two. If anybody doesn't know. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. I mean, the, the fact that women's hockey is, is growing here is just shows that hockey belongs here in North Carolina, no matter what Absolutely. anyone Absolutely. says mm-hmm. about our attendance. Um, so, moving on to more league news, mm. what is your opinion with the CWHL? Are you allowed to give it? Unfortunately, folding. <laughs> well, what's your opinion? Sure. Obviously, it's unfortunate that you know the league did fold. You never want to see, you know, a place for any women's players to basically not be in existence. Mm -hmm. But it also brings us an opportunity to, you know, get everybody in one spot. Um, Obviously, that raises competition level, which is what you want. It'll hopefully bring in more viewers um, with that. But um, there's a big opportunity to essentially go in the right direction. If you have the right people uh, moving it to where it needs to be, then it can really grow and make something even better. So we got to take the good from the bad in this situation. Yeah. Why, um, why did you, well, just for a personal question, why did you decide to go from Buffalo, which I'm happy about, to <laughs> Connecticut? She wasn't a fan of Buffalo last night. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not the biggest Buffalo fan. I would love me some Shaman Dabados. Sure. Uh, we, we've discussed <laughs> that many times. <laughs> but 
<laughs> yeah, we've we've talked about her, um, but I'm not. Yeah, but so why did you go from there to to Connecticut? Um, yeah, so it it wasn't necessarily. A, I'll say it honestly that my choice to leave. Um, kind of what happened is obviously on a year by year basis, you're not signing long contracts. Yeah. Um, so basically, at the end of you know, not this past season, but the season before, when we lost to the Riveters in the championship. Um, new management t- took over uh, mm-hmm. with the Pagulas buying out the Buttes. Right. And the new GM over there um, basically told us, you know, your spot's up for grabs. You know, we are might be going in a different direction with the team or whatnot. But, you know, so dur- basically all summer, um, they would never give me an answer as to where I was on the roster. Um, I heard multiple things. Oh, the coaches want me back, but it's the GM's decision ultimately. And it came down to it where know maybe late july ish um you know they were like oh you're going to be on the team you're going to be on the team but never actually sent me anything hard copy over so at that point i was like oh no i have to scramble and try to find another team um but basically it was you know they moved on from me i wasn't living in buffalo so that makes it tough to make practices and they wanted a centralized team which i get Um, so at that point i started reaching out to the Connecticut's coach Ryan Equali and just saying hey you know if there's any spots let me know he said you know we have the roster full at the time but you know let's keep in touch so I knew when October came around I wasn't gonna have a team to play on and I kind of accepted that I was like okay like it is what it is I can focus you know here in Raleigh help keep growing the game and um, play with the Lady Hurricanes and then December rolled around I knew that they had a couple girls go down with injuries um, so then he reached out to me and he was like, hey, you want to come up for a game, play against your old team, the Buttes, and we'll see how it goes. And it all kind of took off from there. So so you got a revenge game. I in. did. I how did. did that feel? <laughs> it was awesome. I will say it was definitely pretty cool. It was fun. That's cool. In Buffalo, too. So even better. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. So you're yeah. like, guess who's back? I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, you talked about travel especially Mm -hmm. with you being in north carolina and all these teams being usually up north and minnesota out west and now the two canadian teams Mm -hmm. what is that like on the road uh well it's it's definitely tough i mean you don't from team aspects you're not you know you're not flying to games for the most part i mean you're flying to minnesota but um you know other than that like you're you're making treks out to buffalo you know that's eight hours you'll play on maybe like, if you have a Sunday game, you're leaving at 7, you're driving all night, and then you have to go to work the next day on Monday. Yeah. Um, you know, but we all do it because we love it, and it's worth it. So you don't let that stuff, you know, that's just little things where you have to do it. And during the season, are you living here and traveling every weekend or going up there every weekend? Yeah, so during the season, I live here in Cary. I work in Raleigh, and um, I'm flying up, you know, Friday night, you know, for the game Saturday or Sunday and flying back home Sunday night, being at work the next morning. Th- wow. That that has to be extremely tough on you. It, it does. Not to mention expensive as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's definitely worth it though. You know? Yeah, sure. Are you in somewhat the same s- contract situation as you were last year where you kind of don't know at this point? Yeah. So right now it's, it's tough because you, there's a lot of changes going on with the league that, players we just don't know about everything's kind of up in the air um there's new you know connecticut right now is looking for a new gm and a new coach Mm. um so we don't even have a new management at the moment so there's nobody to reach out to about roster spots um so it's tough i mean i would love to play again with connecticut that's the goal um but you know and i'm hoping it it works out that way but um you never know which makes it hard So here's a question for you. If you were the individual in charge of the NWHL, Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to call out your bosses (laughs) here, but let's say you you had some decision-making power. Mm -hmm. What are some decisions you would make that you think would send the league in the right direction? That's a tough question. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Put me on the spot. We're, we're um, trying to be a journalist we don't get group you in here. Or <laughs> sure. Sorry, I'm just the journalist over here. <laughs> no, no, that's good. I mean, you really, right? You you have the opportunity to get the best players and make the league the best it can be. Um, that starts with, you know, making sure that the teams are set up well. It you have to market it as well, 
right? Yeah. You can't you can't just let it all. Oh well, we've got the talent. You have to put that talent out there. Um, so you know, with the supposed expansion to the two Canadian markets, which that should help bring in a lot of people, um, you really just got to keep running with it. And if you look at it all now, even with the CWHL going down, the talent pool is ridiculous. Yeah, you have so many players that would be fighting for low roster spots you're talking about olympic level players exactly oh yeah, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. so i mean you you just got it's hard to say because you don't know what in position you know in if everything was great and you know there were no negativity or no you know financial worries then yeah then you can invest then you can make the players have everything they want um but you got to take what you can. You have to keep moving forward. You essentially have to be five steps forward. Exactly. Um, with the massive growth in the Raleigh hockey market, especially with the Canes being revitalized, our youth system growing, the women's hockey circuit growing, and now with the Wake County Competition Center opening up in Morrisville, do you see possibly an NWHL team coming here, let's say, within the next five years? That's tough to say because, I mean, that'd be a dream. I mean, I know Amanda and I were talking about that. We're like, (laughs) lottery dream right there. Yeah, Um, But the thing is, is it would be a hit down here. It would. Just just from the support that the women's teams have gotten from the Hurricanes, from the fans, the people. It's the people that make the the team successful. So... um, I, I mean, mean, with I really the think they All-Star Game in Nashville, successful. that was a huge yeah. hit. It was it was great. Mm-hmm. And we had several people from North Carolina go yeah. there. I mean, our like the youth teams that I coached this year, they're my biggest one of my biggest fans. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, you can't really ask more than when the kids you coach are going out and buying your jerseys. Like, yeah. that's that's unreal. I mean, there was uh when we were in Nashville, there was like a whole section just cheering for Alyssa and it was it's amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Man, I wish people were bre- buying my jerseys. <laughs> <laughs> You have a jersey? (laughs) My old college jersey. You're not professional. I don't think anyone actually buys college jerseys. Oh, really? Go to an NCAA D1 football game. What, hockey jerseys? D1 hockey, man. Miami of Ohio, Michigan. Okay. Moving on. Those schools are huge, especially with, like, the Big Ten schools. They'll buy anything. (laughs) Anyway, so moving on. So, um, Colleen. So we talked about, you know, bringing the team here. We talked about uh, all the your experiences and what you think the NWHL should look like. So my next question is, all right, you ready for this? Where is your <laughs> no. favorite place? No, never, no one ever is. Where is your favorite place to ha- to play, you know, even on the road or home so far this year or so mm. far in your career? Favorite place to play? I mean, just going from NWHL um, experience, there's, you can't really beat uh, Buffalo right now. Um, I, you know their crowd is huge and their rink is amazing. First of all, I know Amanda's not gonna like that, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, I mean the atmosphere atmosphere is incredible there. Um, the facility is gorgeous, and then playing in Minnesota was something else as well. Um, I heard it, that one's really yeah nice yeah. It's just um, it's tough. You know some some of the markets. I mean. Connecticut, unfortunately, we don't get a lot of fans. The rink was isn't necessarily like the best. What? But but, but they're called the whale. And I thought I the know. whale's supposed to bring all the fans in. Well, yeah. and, and then Connecticut's lie? the only team that's not partnered. Exactly. Right. It, well, not not at the moment because now we've got those new Canadian teams. Sure. But yeah, uh, those the only team. But I don't understand why they're just not getting the attention they're should yeah, be getting. Yeah, I mean, it's tough because Connecticut could be a great market. It mm-hmm. just it's not when you don't have an NHL team that's kind of, you know, right there in your backyard, sure. like, you know, the Riveters yeah. have the Devils and the b- Pride with the Bruins. Now it's 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 tough. You, yeah. know, you don't have your that brother you, to yeah, kind of push, they kind of they're kind of stuck between the Islanders, Rangers <laughs> and the Bruins. They're kind of stuck in that yeah. blank spot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, if if there was you something, the then <laughs> hmm? the Bruins. Yeah, yeah, Massachusetts. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I'm talking yeah, about it's the the yeah. possible. Never, <laughs> <move it on. laughs> Come on, Omar. <laughs> Never mind me. Beep beep. Back it up. <laughs> I don't know. I think I think there's there's there could be some plans to eventually get something going for the whale and 
they should be because it's a great organization and there's no reason why they should be seen as like essentially an ugly ducking duckling or whatnot because a lot of great people there it's a great organization hmm. now great. what re- let's go all the way back what yeah. got you in what got you into yeah. hockey like Ooh. what was the what main thing that period. got you in well, that's tough. I mean, so originally I'm from Florida. So I moved up here when I was about eight. I started playing, I think it was like my parents moved to our house in Cary. And I was, at, you know, my neighbors were just like, oh, go try roller hockey down at XL Sports World. At that time it was, I mean, I can't remember. Um, Is that the one up, like up near PNC? No, that one's right down in, near Ape- in Apex. Oh, actually. right by my house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember going there as a kid and pl- literally... It's called Dream Sports. Dream Sports. Dream Sports. That's Sport. what it was. Well, now it's XL. Yeah, now it's XL. Um, I mean, I remember going there as a kid and just either A, playing basketball, B, playing mm-hmm. roller hockey, yep. or C, playing indoor mm-hmm. hockey, indoor soccer with my friends, but I would treat it like hockey because I would throw people exactly. into the boards. Exactly. <laughs> I know. That's the best part. But um, so started playing out roller hockey, which a lot of kids did because ice wasn't big at the time, probably around like 01, 02. Right, so we watched the Canes in the O2 playoffs. Started getting bigger and bigger. Um, we all ended up switching over to ice around O6, um, and then obviously fell in love with the Canes. Then I wonder why. So, yeah. Did you have Coach Greg too? Coach Greg, he was my <laughs> learn to play. Yeah. Oh no, oh, Greg! I love all, right, Coach all, right, Greg. all right, all right, explain this. Who is Coach yeah. Greg? Coach Greg is. At, is she, he was actually mm-hmm. one of uh, Rayla's coaches, and he's just. He's the coach of coaches around mm-hmm. here. He's the best. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. <laughs> he actually appeared in her, her news story that was on there. Neat. Did you <laughs> I did see that. We yeah. have it on our Twitter somewhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so you obviously fell in love with the Canes yeah. all the way through 06. You said you were mm-hmm. you were from Florida and yep. you grew up there till about eight years old. Yep. Was hockey ever on your mind while you were down there absolutely not i didn't even know that that existed down there disney was all you thought about oh it? yeah <laughs> it was mickey mouse and running around being a little brat so it's hey it's you're talking bad. to a former you're... disney employee here so <laughs> the perfect Love equation disney. of being a great hockey player yeah. <laughs> exactly exactly um but yeah that's, that's awesome. pretty much got started here so you're, what you're saying is there's a lot of opportunity for women's oh, hockey because yeah. at, at any point it, yeah. someone can pick mm-hmm. it up really at, you know sure. some of these kids can pick it up and and really go with it um that's a, that's a beautiful thing about hockey mm-hmm. is that it's not a you know a you know like football is like well you, if you're not good in like call you know element like peewee football you got to move yep. your way up or baseball same way i mean it's all cricket to me but you know yeah, that's what makes hockey great. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be ice hockey either. That's the thing. There's so many opportunities yeah. for roller hockey. There's ball hockey as mm-hmm. well. Like Straight hockey. Whatever you want. Broom ball. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know what? Quidditch. I didn't even know what broom ball was mm-hmm. <laughs> until I started working over here. Let, yeah. Let's just do Dude, Quidditch. What is that? No, but I mean, so you and Alyssa do the um the girls, uh, camps mm-hmm. um occasionally, and you know Rayla's gone to almost all of them <laughs> but i mean and they're huge but there's there's so many girls in there and they're mm-hmm. so talented i just think that's great i'm and i just it shows the amount of talent that's here yeah absolutely i mean Alyssa does a great job of coming back down you know at least a few times a year yeah, and um it's a hit i mean there's a demand for it so it's yeah. great I mean, even jillian dempsey came down she which did yeah really she cool. was she came down last time it's yeah. awesome now as a player we all know playing careers don't last permanently. Mm -hmm. And I know you're probably thinking about maybe going into coaching. What is that transition like? Um, It's tough. I mean, I never really saw myself as a coach necessarily. Um, But when I moved back down here from college, I knew a lot of people and I knew I wanted to help out with youth in some way. Um, So I ended up just helping out at a few practices and it's, it's tough because you don't see that other side of coaching. Um, you don't, you know, it's different having the patience to explain things and think, um, like, like a kid would or, or a player would, but it actually, it helps because you have been on the other side. So it, it more so easily translates over, um, specifically for me, I enjoy skill work types. I don't necessarily like running a team or, you know, that type of stuff, but if I can give out my knowledge on skills and skating and that kind of stuff, that's where I want to be. Speaking of coaching, just a question popped into my head. Why do you think we don't have as many 
female coaches in the NWHL? It seems to be mostly men. That's a good question. I never honestly really thought about that. Uh, I mean, it's 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 nothing that I don't think that women can't do it. Of it's course. just I think it's more so a demand. It's hard to get coaches in that aspect that want to, you know, that have the high level of, you know, coaching ability to do that. Sure. Would you say it's a monetary thing? If is there if is there a way to in, if we had injected money mm-hmm. into the NWHL, right? For either ticket sure. sales or what have you, um would that be able to help increase the quality uh, between coaches and players? I mean, I mean, if you throw more money at anything, then more people yeah. gonna, gonna be at it. Well, that not necessarily true for the AAF, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, <laughs> true. Yeah. But uh, with the NWHL, they they are getting some publicity out there they're getting on to nhl tonight they're Mm -hmm. getting on the nhl network they stream all their games on twitter Mm -hmm. so it's not like they're not out there period they're out there it's just a matter of growing the game so it in reality it reminds me of like the original six for the nhl way back when where not many people really knew about the league and then it just slowly grew and it slowly grew is that are you drawing like the same parallel as that, especially now that the two Canadian markets are coming in? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I mean, you also have to remember that the NWHL is still in, I mean, we finished year four right now. Yeah, so it's still, still the new. business is still in its infancy. Mm-hmm. Um, you're Then that's the hardest part is is picking up and keep, keep pushing through even when you do have setbacks. Yeah. Man, I like this interview. <laughs> She's easy to talk to. Very easy. I'm very much enjoying yeah, this. Uh, it's, all right, so uh, you got the floor, Colleen. Is there <laughs> anything, anything at no all? No pressure. No yeah, pressure. right? <laughs> no. Not, you, not at all. You can say anything. You could even ask us a question if you want. Yeah, we'll but, let you do what you want. Mm. Yeah, so you got the floor right now, right? So this is oh, your, no. your your platform to speak out. To Welcome to Colleen's you, Corner. Our hundreds of know, listeners. No. Um, so many listeners. Hopefully someday thousands of <laughs> listeners. Uh, of listeners. Oh, yeah. Who, who will come back. A thousand. There, because there are people who, are, who will come back and sure. re-listen to this episode sure. here. So... Here's your chance to talk to people from your heart about women's oh, hockey, yeah. the importance of the sport, <laughs> and everything. No pressure. no pressure at all. No the pressure. On you. Open up your heart and just pour it out. Wow, that oh, sounds like a Disney quote. I know. I Perfect know. for a Florida girl. Let's go. Man, I should have wrote out a speech. Uh, no, I mean, but honestly, like, uh, just f- from growing up here and seeing and ev- from where hockey was when I was a kid to where it is now. Um, not just women's, but, you know, with the boys as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you can just tell that the people here want to support women's hockey, um, which is awesome. And it's not just, you know, women supporting women. It's it's men supporting women. It's women supporting men. Mm-hmm. It's something that you know, this year alone has been huge. I mean, you look at the NC State, you know, college team and they're – their road to nationals and then you look at the women's lady canes team and their road to nationals you look at you know the canes jumping in and um you know doing shout outs to the whale having Alyssa, you know sound the siren Mm -hmm. at the playoff game Um, the hero of the game (laughs) right yeah very cool like just being on fox sports um carolinas things like that that Everyone in the community, it's not just Raleigh, too. It's Charlotte, it's it's Fayetteville, it's Greensboro, it's Winston-Salem. That, you know, people like me and I know everybody else out there is just so thankful that we can stick to such a community. And, I, and you know, that's the thing is, like, if I wouldn't ever leave to go play for another team or have to move because this is where my home is. And uh, everyone can see that just because everyone is so supportive and you can't ask for a better, better hockey market. Yeah. You really can. So. And, you know, when I land the lottery, Colleen's going to be the first one I call because <laughs> oh I will be buying a, a team. We're doing it. So do it. We're on do it. it. And she's going to be your it. coach <laughs> or your star player. <laughs> Whatever she wants. Okay. I'll just throw the money out there we'll and I'll, I'll let her. Uh, Boom. You know, just go, go yeah. full Dundon. Yep. You're like, here's the money, sure. Colleen. Fix it. Sure. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, but it's also, it's, it's people like you guys yeah. you guys doing doing this podcast stuff i mean you it's give us awesome too much credit. i know i mean <laughs> like just the fact that you're willing to talk about hockey and that you love it so much it's the passion that 
that is really incredible with the Raleigh oh, area. So it's cool. Yay, yay. she's including <laughs> us. That's my suck up of the day. <laughs> yeah. Well, was it a bit of a surprise <laughs> to you when you found out that it was me? Yeah, no, I had no idea. I was like, oh my gosh, that's awesome. Like, you're everywhere. Like, that's so cool. I'm but, everywhere. Cool, but you are. You're so involved, and that's what makes yeah. it special. So oh, I love cool. it. It's a passion. Well, it's as really cool. a bit of a thank you for coming with us, we present you with this stick with our oh very goodness. special Revolution Rampage stickers. We can awesome. sign it awesome. for you too. Thank you. Yes, I would you love that. You know all my that. signature. It looks like scribble, scribble, that scribble. Is so scribble. cool. We'll definitely have to get a picture too. Yeah, this is yeah. absolutely so cool. Well, thank you. And don't I appreciate yeah. that. don't worry That's if you so bring. Cool. Don't worry if Alyssa comes down. I got one for her too. Oh no, no. yeah. The, this Let, is my special time. That's right. Don't take it away <laughs> from kidding. her. No, no, no. No, if Alyssa comes down, yeah, get her on because she's awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's I've super talked to her awesome. about it. Maybe For this sure. summer when she comes down. Yeah, put some tape on and make it your Definitely. official stick. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, <laughs> yeah. Colleen. Ladies and gentlemen, Colleen Murphy of the NWHO. Thank Woo! you guys. I appreciate it. It's been awesome. This has been a great episode. I loved it. Uh, yeah. This is probably going to be our hit episode right here. Maybe. Um, so, yeah. So, you're listening to Revolution Rampage. Uh, follow us on Twitter, on Facebook. Uh, Colleen is also on Twitter. Please yep. make sure to give her a follow. We're also on yep. Instagram. Do you have an Instagram? I Colleen? do Instagram, Twitter. It's all all those. We like got a lot of tagging to do. Yeah. So <laughs> yep. we, so yeah. uh, Red Volu- uh, at Revolution R for mm-hmm. um, Twitter at Revolution Rampage for Instagram. Also find us on Facebook um, and on our website and everywhere you can you know wherever you're listening. Please give it. Go ahead and give us a subscribe. We got some videos on YouTube as well. So uh, mm-hmm. please. Uh, you can also listen to these episodes on YouTube. Uh, please give us a listen. Give us a subscription uh, wherever you find this. And there's always awesome guests coming on and more and more content heading your way. Uh, so next next episode, we'll have the Marksman Coach on with us. And I think that's going to be a great episode. I, will it top this? I doubt it. We're getting <laughs> big. I doubt it. <laughs> but it, shout outs to Rayla. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but... Great episode. Let's wrap it up and let's see if the Canes can make it to the Eastern yeah. Conference Finals. Awesome. Two wins away. Yep. Here All we right. go, boys. All right. Thank you so much, Colleen. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. It's been a blast. Bye.